What's up, everybody? This is Joshua Casper, and welcome to an Ableton Live slash gravity slash contact tutorial. This is the first video in a series I'm going to be doing on trailer, sound effect, and scoring. And this video is going to show you how to set up one instance of contact to have multiple outputs so we have ultimate control over different instances of contact instruments right inside of Ableton without having to bounce back and forth or do anything crazy inside of contact. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna open up contact and this should be what you see. Um, we're gonna concentrate on the output section down here. If you don't see that, it's this button up here at the top. You hit the output and then you can see it down here. What I like to do is just go ahead and set up 16 channels right off the bat because I don't need to use them all, but it's better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them and have to come back in and redo the process and maybe mess everything up. So I just like to get it all done right out of the way. And the way to do that is you add channels. Now, what we want is eight stereo channels, which is 16 outputs. So eight times two is 16. That's great. And what I'm gonna do is come in here and just select KTSD1, which is contact stereo one. I'm gonna have them go in ascending output assignment, and I'm gonna delete what is there now and just start from one and go from there. I think it's best just to have that clean slate and do with that. And I'm also gonna check, make this my default configuration so I don't have to repeat this process in the future. Hit okay. And it says the output configuration was saved as default and hit OK. Blah, dow. We can see that we have eight stereo outputs and it goes up to 16. Now we need to do a couple more things to have control over these instruments inside of Ableton Live. So I'm just going to load a, a gravity instance inside of here. And that's just me hitting the keyboard and you can see that the stereo ST.1 is showing us that that's where the audio is coming out. And we can also see that the audio is coming out of the MIDI channel that we created in the beginning. And we can also see more information about the output and input section if we hit the little I inside of the circle over here. So here we have the output is to stereo dot one and the MIDI channel is MIDI channel one. But what happens if we add a second instrument inside of this contact player? Now I have two instruments. Let me go ahead and put in some MIDI. Here we go. As we can see, the output for this second instance is going to stereo one, which is gonna be the same output as that first instance, and we're gonna use MIDI channel two. Now, if I wanted just to do everything on the same MIDI track, I could come into the MIDI channel and change it to one. And now if I play this MIDI clip, it's gonna trigger both instances of gravity at the same time, and it's gonna output them to the same stereo output. And that might be what you want, but I don't think it usually is going to be the way. So what we're going to do is change MIDI channel to 2 and add a second MIDI channel. So Control shift t to add a new MIDI channel. And if we come in here now... Nothing is happening. And that's because we need to set it up inside a live to communicate with this MIDI channel. And the way we do that is to use an instrument and an external instrument and drop it right on this other MIDI channel. And then you come on MIDI 2 and we want to send this MIDI clip to the contact player. And then we want to say we want to send it to MIDI channel 2 inside the contact player, which is labeled by 2 contact. So now when I play them, we're hearing both instances of gravity, but they're coming out of the same stereo output. But I can still come in and manipulate this MIDI differently than this MIDI.
which again might be something you want to do. But we can go a little bit further and get maximum control if we come in and tell this second instance of contact to go out of the second audio channel. And look at it now. We're getting the audio output in this second MIDI channel instead of j just this first one. So now not only do I have control over the MIDI itself, but I can put uh, more effects onto the channel and affect the sound that way by itself and different effects for this one. I can control my um, volume control and my panning and this and that. It just gives us a lot more control over everything and I think it's the best way to go. So let's just repeat that process a little bit quicker this time so we can get a third instance inside of our contact player. I'm gonna go Control Shift T to add a new MIDI channel. I'm gonna drop the external instrument instance on here. MIDI to contact. Let's go to contact three this time. And if we wanted to, we can just go to stereo three, the audio from, and this should be all set up now. Let's put some MIDI in here. Let's put it over here just so we can definitely hear it. Come back in. Let's take maybe, this time we're gonna use Heaviosity's damage player. And we're gonna do the same thing. Right now, we're gonna trigger the MIDI on that third MIDI channel, but it's gonna come out of this first stereo output. Let's move this over. So as you can see, it's doing exactly what we thought it would do. But if we come back in now, and instead of the output to stereo, stereo one, we go to stereo three, we'll have our control over it individually here. And that's all you need to do to have different MIDI channels for each of the instances of instruments inside of the contact player. Again, if you followed along to this point, I kind of went around about ways so you got a better understanding of what was happening, but that's just the way you should leave it. <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't. It doesn't take up any more CPU if you're not using those channels. It's just, you know, you might as well have it that way. And just, you have to remember to drop in an external instrument and then just make it con uh, talk to contact and whichever MIDI channel you want and then whichever stereo output you want. So that's the intro. Now in the next tutorial, we're gonna actually start using gravity and damage to make some movie trailers. We'll see you next time. Peace.